another week, another uh, another good ball game for us. I thought our guys played well against um, you know against a good football team. I think Washington has a very good football team, um, and so it was good to see us you know get a get a, a win against a good team and a, a tough place to win. I think we've played last two weeks. We've played in front of 150,000 fans on the road, so that's been. Uh, it's been two great environments to play in, and you got to give our guys a lot of credit for figuring out how to win those two games. Um, I think Kyle's, we found this out last night, I think it's the first time in 23 years that we've won consecutive uh, road games on back-to-back -back weekends. Um, I guess since, again, you have to go all the way back to 1993. So it's a real credit to our players. Um, tough to win on the road, particularly twice, particularly against uh, Good football programs, so um, you know it was it was a good solid win for us. And looking forward to this week, Washington State's uh, typical Washington State football team. I mean, they're going to play really hard. They're going to score a lot of points. Um, you know, going to show you a lot of different looks defensively. So we're going to have to play really well to have a chance to win this one for sure. So looking forward to the challenge. I think our guys are excited about playing, but we need to have a great week of practice. Sonny, how much does this week provide maybe a different challenge, bigger challenge for your pass defense and against a more mature, developed passing game than you've seen so far? Yeah. It's how anxious are you to, are to see that? Yeah, definitely different. I don't know if anxious is the right word. <laughs> um, but, no, I'm, I mean, I think it's going to be a big challenge for us. And as you said, we'll have a lot better idea of, of what our pass defense is like. I mean, Washington State throws the ball against everybody. They do it. It doesn't matter who they're playing against. They're, they're, they're good at throwing it. They know how to throw it. They have good players, um, you know, a veteran offensive line, really big physical veteran line, and a quarterback that, you know, is a typical uh, Washington State quarterback, knows how to distribute the ball to the playmakers and does a great job of, of executing their offense. So, as you said, we'll have a better idea, what, you know, what that part of our game's like, um, you know, on Saturday. And how much credit do you give your pass rush, improved pass rush for sort of what you guys have been able to do in yeah. the secondary. Yeah, no, I think I think I think the two play off each other. I think tight coverage makes the quarterback hold the ball longer. I think um, getting a good pass rush makes the quarterback throw under duress and, and turn the ball over. You know, I think we've got nine interceptions and if you go back and look at those, a lot of those are due to pressure. Um, so, you know, the two things go hand in hand and you know, I think we're playing well in our secondary. I've been very impressed with uh, you know, with the way our safeties have played, I think Demarie has been a really consistent player for us. Steph's been a very consistent player for us, and then the two corners, um, you know, have played well as well. So that helps. Sonny, uh, can you give us an update on uh, Daniel Lasco and Mustafa Jalil? Yeah, yeah. Uh, both of them will practice. Both of them will, will fully practice, and we'll kind of see how they both perform in practice, and that'll, you know, merit how much they play. Um, on Saturday, you know, it's like everything else. You've got to be careful about bringing guys back too soon and and overworking some guys. You know, and Moose, we've we've tried to handle Moose the right way and keep him healthy and keep him moving well, uh, the best that we can. And and so, you know, he needs to have a good week of practice. And and um, same with Daniel. I think they both need to practice well and and um, prove that they're healthy enough to be able to play effectively. Saw Pyatt back on the depth chart this week. Are you expecting to have him ready yeah, to go? Yeah, we think Griffin will be cleared and ready to go. Um, Cameron Saffel should be cleared and ready to go, and we'll see what what he can bring to us. Um, so we're getting some guys back from, from some injuries, and you know I think it's, um, it's certainly going to help us having Griffin back. And, and like I said, Saffel's a freshman kid. It's impressive physically, and we'll see how he you know performs once he gets an opportunity to get some reps. On the injuries, um, what's the status of Farley and, and Devontae Wilson? And what was Saffel's injury? Well, he had an ACL coming out of high school. Saffel did. Um, Farley, you know, we'll see today. We'll know more today after after we see him try to move around. Um, we'll kind of see how he progresses through the week. I mean, it's an ankle sprain. It's not a particularly bad one. Everybody reacts differently to those things. Some guys, they recover within a day or two. Sometimes it lingers. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out. 
Um, we expect Devontae to be fully integrated back into practice today. Did you get any response from the Pac-12 about the the hit on Kenny Lawler? Yeah, yeah. No, I did. I talked to him, and I was satisfied with what they had to say. No, I'm not. I'm not supposed to, to talk about that. You know, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what they're what, what they're what, what they're going to go with. Is the team being ranked, considering where you guys have been the last couple of years? Do you, do you have to guard against guys being maybe satisfied? Of where yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think you always have to guard against that, and especially when you don't have a lot of experience being ranked. Um, so you know, yeah, yeah, it's not something we're going to talk about much. I mean, our guys have been incredibly focused and haven't paid attention to that stuff. I mean, it literally means nothing. You know, you, you at the same time, I want the guys to feel good about the progress they've made. I mean, it's been a lot of hard work that's led us to this point to, you know, to get some national recognition, but it doesn't mean anything. Um, you know, it's a number that, you know, somebody sticks on you and it doesn't really mean much. And so, you know, um, we didn't talk about it much when we were ranked probably last in the country, and we're not going to talk about it much that we're ranked now in the top 25. So it doesn't really affect us much. But it's, um, you know, again, it's uh, I don't want to undervalue it because it, the guys, it is a sign of a, some progress, but it doesn't mean anything. It won't have any impact on the game on Saturday, I can assure you. Uh, Mark's uh, let him in receiving two years ago and then sat out last year. Now he's back. Is he a lot better now? Can you see improvement over... Uh, yeah, I think I mean I think he's I think I've seen improvement really from week one to week three. I mean he's he's improved every week and um, you know when you sit out a year sometimes it takes a while to, to kind of get back in the flow of things. But I mean he's a very good player. You know he's a, he's um, can make plays on the ball. I think that's the thing that stands out for him. He can make a lot of competitive plays on the football. He goes and gets the ball. He's got a lot of confidence. Falk's got a lot of confidence in him and allows him to go make some some critical plays and. You know, they've got a lot of good receivers. You know, Craig Kraft is the guy that they go to a lot on third down. Um, you know, he's a real consistent guy that is a good route runner, battles for the ball, has got great hands. And again, the relationship that Falk and Craig Kraft have together, I think is, um, you know, they're on the same page. And, um, you know, they know, uh, Falk knows where Craig Kraft's gonna be and Craig Kraft knows where Falk wants him. And so that's a big part of, uh, you know, the success they're both having. Darius, <clears throat> excuse me, Darius was asked about this a little bit. What do you, how do you sort of reflect on the craziness of last year's game against Washington State? And uh, sa safe to say you don't expect something. Well, I mean, you never know what to expect. Uh, that's, the, that's the great thing about college football. You know, nobody knows what's going to happen and who's going to play well and who's going to have a game where they turn the ball over a bunch and, you know, and, and make some big plays in the kicking game. You know, I think that those are things that happen every Saturday, and that's why people keep tuning in. And that's why people love college football so much. Um, yeah, you know, you don't get a chance to reflect much on that stuff. I mean, it was a crazy ball game. We were fortunate to win it. Um, you know, had some luck down the stretch, which never hurts. But, um, you know, I don't, I don't know if I anticipate that kind of game this year, you know, in terms of the scoring. Uh, but I know Saturday's game will be a very competitive, tough, hard-fought football game that – uh, we have to play very well to have a chance to win. So we, we talked to you the other night. <coughs> pardon me, the other night about your kick coverage issues, but your kickoff returns haven't been effective either. You haven't gotten really anything from it yet. Why do you think that is? I mean, last year in this game, it's where yeah, had the two long yeah, ones. yeah. You know, it's it's a lot of it has to do with with what's going on in the games. I mean, you know, we didn't really get any opportunities to return kicks against Texas. Last week, they were either kicking with the wind or into the wind. And so a lot of the, the kick return opportunities we had were kind of pop kicks or short kicks. I mean, so it's been a, a weird year for that type of thing. I mean, I think our sample size is too small at this point to, to draw a lot of conclusions. I mean, it needs to get better, uh, just like our kick coverage does. I mean, that's something clearly that we have to improve on. And, you know, we'll give the adequate practice time to that this week, I can assure you, and, um, and make sure that we improve that area. Goff somewhere in, in the in the hundreds uh, ranked among uh, NCAA quarterbacks in the time that he has to get the ball off in the pocket. Pro Football Focus hat on there. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that is that considering how pass happy this game is likely to become? Is that a concern? Oh, you know, 
I don't I don't pay much attention to that. I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I think, you know, the better we p protect our passer, our quarterback, the, the better our offense is going to be. And, and we get that. And, you know, we're going to have to run the football. I mean, that's – our offense works better and more effectively when we run the ball. So it's going to be important for us to run it and always takes heat off your quarterback when you can run it. What has Cameron Walker brought you guys in that nickelback role this season? You know, I think it's a really good fit for his skill set. Um, you know, he's played both corner and safety in the past, and, and he's kind of a combination of a corner and a safety, which is what the nickel position is, just what his, what his size and skills are. Um, you know, I think he's playing with a lot of confidence. You know, I think that's the biggest thing for him. You know, he... he he is comfortable in that position. We've allowed, we've stuck him there and, and allowed him to, to get good at that position and haven't moved him around. I think that's been real important to his development, just, you know, consistently playing the same position in practice and games and, and becoming good at that one spot. Um, that always helps, you know, players develop, especially somebody who's been a corner and a safety both. I mean, I think it's important for them to get settled in. And, um, and he's done that. And he's just, you know, he's, he's a smart kid. I mean, he's, he's, knows how to leverage the ball. He understands the fits. He understands the passing game. That's a hard position because you're responsible for a lot of different things. And um, just how smart he is, I think, has allowed him to, to make that adjustment quickly and, and makes him an effective player. Any further questions for Sonny? Can you evaluate how Craig has played for you? I mean, he he didn't get to play last year because he was sick and lost a bunch of weight, and he came back. I know you thought he had a great spring, but um, you're not going to get two and a half sacks every game, but he's been pretty good for you. Yeah. Like. Yeah, he, he's, he has been good. I mean, he's, you know, he's very tenacious. That's the, the big thing about Kyle is that he just plays the game, you know, the way it's supposed to be, pl be played. He plays hard every play. Um, you know, he's uh, – gotten stronger I think this off season, you know, and, and he's moving moving well and you know, he's just been around. He's an experienced guy that that, you know, has a, a an arsenal of pass rush moves and that he's developed and um you know, so he's improved that part of his game. He's also played the run well. But as I said, I think the thing that stood out for him is he just plays so hard. You know, he's he's a second effort guy and, and uh somebody who never gives up on a play. Does he have to play that way, given that he's maybe a little undersized? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I think that's, that's the way a lot of our guys have to play. You know, we want them to, to play that way and play hard. And, um, you know, and certainly he's somebody who's done that. If I could follow on a different topic, how well do you think your offense has played so far? Overall, through four games, I yeah. mean, Do you still have a? a yeah, yeah. Run? No, I think we've. I think we played good enough to win. I think that's been the the bottom line. And. You know, we've had some games where we, you know, have tried to run the clock out. I mean, if you go back and you look at our games, you know, in all four games this year, we've had a pretty substantial lead, and you know, we've we've been trying to run the clock out. And and in some games, it's been better than others in terms of doing that, and uh, and some others have been more difficult. But um, you know, when you're playing offense with a lead, sometimes your mentality changes a little bit, and we have to guard against that. You know, we've got to keep our foot on the accelerator and and become a, an, an offense that, you know, doesn't worry too much about the scoreboard. And we got to, as play callers and uh, coaches, I've got to make sure I stay aggressive. Sometimes I've probably put the, um, pulled the reins on Tony a little bit, you know, before I should have in some situations. And, you know, you learn from it. You figure out what your team's like, what your guys can handle, and, and you know, you adjust accordingly. But I think we're capable of playing much better than we have up to this point. Their uh, defensive front's a little undersized. Uh, now, are they easy to run against, and how do they make it? What do, what do they do to try to make up for that? Yeah, they're, they're, they move around a lot. I mean, it's real active, a lot of stunts, a lot of line movement. Um, you know, you're never really blocking stationary guys. And so it, and it's in their best interest in a lot of times to have smaller guys because they're quicker. And... You know, and that's what they do up front. They move guys around a lot. Now their tackles are big guys, you know, and they're, and they're powerful and strong. Um, but their front's very active, um, and that's probably the strength of, of of that group for sure. It's just their ability to move and create havoc by stunting and twisting and line movements and that type of thing. 
Okay, any more questions for Sonny? Okay, thanks. All right, guys, thank you, appreciate it.